All right, we want to begin with that breaking news um, as another potential battle for Speaker of the House unfolds. Last hour, Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene filed a motion to oust Speaker Mike Johnson. Today, I filed a motion to vacate after Speaker Johnson has betrayed our conference and broken our rules. The clock has started. It's time for our conference to choose a new speaker. So her action came right after the House passed a bill to finish funding the government and avoid a shutdown. Now the bill heads to the Senate, who has until midnight to keep the government open. That vote uh, sparking fresh tensions within the House Republican caucus, which had more members vote against it than for it. Uh, this new threat, it's coming just over five months after Kevin McCarthy was removed as speaker. NBC's Ryan Nobles is reporting on Capitol Hill for us. Also with us is Sam Stein, deputy managing editor for politics for Politico and an MSNBC contributor and former Republican Congressman Carlos Corbello of Florida and MSNBC uh, political analyst. Ryan, start us off. What happens with this motion to vacate? Well, at this point, it's just a threat, Yasmin. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, did not make it uh, privileged, which means that it doesn't have to necessarily come to the floor at any specified amount of time. It basically means that she has it there. It is filed with the clerk. When she believes that it's time to make a move, uh, she can do that. It, and this is basically her way of telling Mike Johnson that you're on notice, that I'm unhappy with the way that this spending negotiation went down, uh, and I would like you to see, I would like to see you change course. Listen to what Green said uh, after she filed that motion. I filed the motion to vacate today, but it's more of a warning and a pink slip. I do not wish to inflict pain on our conference and to throw the, throw the house in chaos. But this is basically a warning and it's time for us to go through, through the process, take our time and find a new speaker of the house that will stand with Republicans and our Republican majority instead of standing with the Democrats. <laughs> Now, part of the reason uh, that Marjorie Taylor Greene may not want to put this on the floor yet is because she may not have the votes to oust Speaker Johnson. Uh, most Republicans have said that they do not want to go through the drama uh, of that uh, speaker removal like they did a couple of months ago. And furthermore, there's even the possibility that some Democrats may come in uh, and provide the level of cover Mike Johnson needs to keep his job. For instance, I spoke to Tom Swazi, a Long Island Democrat, who told me today that he would vote to keep Mike Johnson in office. Uh, for Johnson's part, he is trying to just brush this all off. His uh, spokesman, Raj Shaw, said in a statement today that Speaker Johnson always listens to the concerns of members, but he's focused on governing. He will continue to push conservative legislation that secures our border, strengthens our national defense, and demonstrates how we'll grow our majority. So the one thing we haven't talked about yet, Yasmin, is that they did pass yeah. this spending plan, which means that they will likely avoid a partial government shutdown, but uh, no good deed goes unpunished. And, and Speaker Johnson uh, facing the wrath of his caucus as a result. We, we thought that yeah. was going to be the big news today. And we are going to get to that, Ryan. So just keep that in your back pocket. Yeah, 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 any, yeah. any chance, though, Ryan, that Speaker Johnson could actually call Marjorie Taylor Greene's bluff here and bring, bring the motion to the floor for a vote? I doubt he would take that risk, at least not at this point, because, you know, the margins right now are so small between Republicans and Democrats, it wouldn't take that much uh, to topple him uh, from office. And if Marjorie Taylor Greene can convince just two or three of her colleagues, she may uh, be able to do that. So I, he'd prefer to not have to deal with this at all. So just let it sit there. Uh, let it be the threat that it is and see what happens over the next couple of months. Sam, th this is a caucus that has already struggled to get um, things done um, amongst and amidst kind of the drama that we've seen going on in the Republican caucus. Um, how much more likely is this to further paralyze uh, that caucus? <laughs> how much more can it be paralyzed? Uh, <laughs> look, I think I think the, uh, the the implication here is not necessarily that Speaker Johnson is going to see his gavel taken away. Obviously, if she wanted to do that, she would have filed it uh, on privilege. She didn't. It's a threat. I think downstream, the real question mark now is, what does Johnson do, what does the Speaker do about uh, a standalone bill to pass aid for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, and humanitarian assistance in Gaza? That had already been a very, very heavy lift. seems to me that Marjorie Taylor Greene is essentially saying to him, look, if you go forward with that, I have this motion right here, I will file it, and I will recruit Republicans to join me. And as Ryan said, it only takes a handful. And then it gets even crazier, because at that point, the question then could come to Democrats. Do you move to save Speaker Johnson in hopes that he goes forward with Ukraine aid? So I really don't think this was necessarily a reaction to a government funding bill. 
conservatives are always upset uh, over these government funding bills. It's happened for years now. It cost Kevin McCarthy his job. I really do think this is about future legislation specifically around Ukraine, which Marjorie Taylor Greene has said she does not want to see. Th then what could this mean, Ryan Nobles, for Ukraine aid and getting that across the finish line with this threat now looming out there for Speaker Johnson? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think this is part of Marjorie Taylor Greene's strategy, right? I mean, I think she knew that there was going to be no scenario in which she was going to stop this funding bill from going forward. But Ukraine aid has been one of the things that she's been most insistent about. Uh, she, that's the red line that she has drawn from the very beginning and has told Speaker Johnson that she does not want to see Ukraine aid brought to the floor. Uh, Speaker Johnson certainly open to that. He's had a conversation about it. They floated a number of different packages. They're not going to deal with it until they come back from this two-week recess. But I think this is her telling him, I've got this now. It is on the clerk's desk. And if you bring Ukraine aid to the floor, then I will take the next step uh, and, and push this motion to vacate. But I have to tell you, Yasmin, uh, if it plays out that way. If Speaker Johnson yeah. does put Ukraine aid on the floor, I think you'll see a rush of Democrats come to support him. I, I, so I talked to Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger, who's a, a national security a Democrat, former CIA agent, uh, who is in no way interested in protecting Mike Johnson. But she told me that if he did, does the responsible thing in her mind and brings Ukraine aid to the floor, then she would at least be open to that conversation of preventing the chaos from taking place again. So, you know, there's a balancing act happening by all sides involved in this. Uh, and the Ukraine aid is definitely a big factor. Congressman, could we stop and think for a moment about the position that we're currently in? Um, this is Speaker Mike Johnson, who is a fervent supporter of Donald Trump, who was endorsed by Donald Trump as well. And there is a potential in which Democrats could come to his aid, could come to his savior, or saving, I should say, um, as Speaker of the House, especially to get something that's important to them across the finish line, which is this uh, Ukraine aid. And we mentioned it, right, because it's not just Marjorie Taylor Greene, the Republican House caucus, that is um, outwardly spoken about her... Um, disagreeing with um, the way in which Mike Johnson has carried out things. I want to play for you some sound from Chip Roy, if I can, and then we'll talk on the other side. Frankly, our Republican leadership are basically walking swamp glossary. There's always an excuse for what we can't do. Always a reason. The majority's too thin. Oh, I'd be there with you if I could wave my magic wand. There is always an excuse for Republicans to fail. We're here to say that we're going to succeed for the American people. They ousted Kevin McCarthy. This is the man, this is the leadership congressman that they wanted. These are people who do not understand or refuse to accept the basic rules of governing. You have to have the votes, Jasmine. If you don't have the votes, you can't move forward. What has Mike Johnson done? Exactly the same thing that Kevin McCarthy did. By the way, this is particularly incoherent on the part of Mar uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene because she was one of Kevin McCarthy's strongest supporters, and she stuck by him even when others undermined him and eventually ousted him. So she is now attacking Speaker Johnson for doing the same exact things that Kevin McCarthy did when she stood by him, which is understanding that Republicans don't have the votes to do any of this alone, so they have to rely on Democrats. And Mike Johnson was very clear this week when some of these members wanted more time to review a bill that they were not going to support. He said, we have to govern. Mike Johnson knows that there's only one playbook in the House right Right now, which is to pass these important bills with bipartisan support. We talked about in the past how this rule of only taking one member to file a motion to vacate Congressman was going to come back to haunt Republicans specifically, and we're seeing the fruits of that now. That's right. Kevin McCarthy cut a deal with these members because he so badly wanted to become speaker. It turns out he gave them the weapon that they ended up killing him with. And now that weapon is being used against Mike Johnson. I do think the difference now is, as Ryan said earlier, there's a good number of Republicans who don't want to walk down this path again, even a lot of the more hardline conservative members. And there are a lot of centrist Democrats who actually want to get things done in the House and don't want to relive another embarrassing two or three weeks as House Republicans try to find a new speaker. But Yasmin, zooming out a little bit here, this should have been a good day for House Republicans. Speaker Johnson could have given his centrist members, right. swing district members, the opportunity to say, hey, we did the right thing. We funded the government. But instead, we're talking about potentially ousting Speaker Johnson. So, Ryan, let's circle back to what we thought was the breaking news that we were going to be following at the top of the hour. But instead, we're talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene and her motion to vacate. And that is the passage 
um, in the House and now going on to the Senate. Talk about um, the uphill battle or challenges ahead um, in the Senate to avoid a government shutdown. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a, a probably a fait accompli in the Senate. It, it's going to happen. I think it's just a matter of timing. Uh, there's certainly the votes necessary uh, to pass this legislation. But as, as we know, the Senate has uh, a very deliberative procedural process, and any one senator can hold that process up and make it go over an extended period of time. So what senators are doing right now is they're huddling behind closed doors and, and coming up with the vehicle that would appease the small group of senators uh, who don't want to see this pass or at least want to see the whole process moved up. Uh, and so likely what they'll do at some point is come up with a, a time agreement that will allow votes to take place on amendments that won't pass, and then eventually they'll get it done. Uh, it could take well into the evening to make that happen, uh, mm -hmm. but there's every optimism that they'll get it done before the midnight deadline. Uh, you know, just to kind of give you a, a, an idea of what's happening here uh, in the Senate, uh, obviously there's a two-week recess that many of them are anxious to begin as early as possible, especially when the outcome is not uh, in question. But also Senator Susan Collins uh, just suffered the loss of her mother. The funeral is on Sunday, and there's a degree of respect for Senator Collins that they want to get this wrapped up in time for her to be uh, at that funeral, especially because she's one of the lead uh, negotiators in this appropriations process. So I do expect uh, that there will be somewhat of a glide path in the Senate once they come to that agreement. Right, Noble, Sam Stein, Carlos Cabello, thank you guys all. Appreciate it.